Hi everybody, Ebes here. Welcome to today's video. So the news of the day is that Microsoft are releasing Windows 11 Lite and this is going to be a massive de-bloated version of Windows. It will still have all the telemetry, spyware and everything else. Um, but it will come with things like the AI is optional on a lot of the background services disabled, which means it's basically a very, very stripped down version of Windows 11. Will that be enough to stop people migrating over to Linux? Well, who knows? Uh, I'm sure an awful lot of people will still come over to Linux, but it might stem... Um, the mass exodus that we're currently witnessing at the minute. Now then, <clears throat> today's video is entitled Ubuntu, but not as you know it. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine a world where you don't need KDE Plasma to make your desktop look absolutely stunning. I've always felt that KDE Plasma has too many features and for somebody new and fresh over to Linux, it's a bit too much to expect them to theme it and customise it exactly how they want it. So what's your alternative? Well, wouldn't it be nice where you don't really have to do an awful lot to have a stunning desktop, to have it absolutely gorgeous and feeling bang up to date in the 21st century wouldn't that be wonderful well ladies and gentlemen ta -da! here we go this is in my personal opinion one of the most stunning desktop operating experiences i've ever had it is of course the gorgeous ubuntu cinnamon there you go how gorgeous and stunning is that as a desktop it's instantly familiar across the generations you've got a menu or app menu with all your apps in um, it's very very similar to other commercially available operating systems and yet it's unmistakably ubuntu the theming is stunning the icons, the artwork is absolutely stunning. And to turn your stock Ubuntu cinnamon into something like this is about 10 minutes work. Even for the uninitiated, you can go from spring chicken to shite hawk in around 10 minutes flat. If you want to take your time, quarter of an hour. Absolutely Gorgeous. Built and based. Now, this is built and based off Ubuntu 23.10. Um, I'm quite chomping at the bit to get my um, sticky mitts on 24.02, which is the long-term support. Because um, these shorter release cycle distros, uh, they're great for testing, but, uh, the, you know, I mean, they're just not long-term. Now, the other thing I've done is, is I've installed a selection of software, both from the software repos, both from .deb files and snaps. Now, I don't know a lot of people will take the piss and say, well, the old world's adopted flat pack, you know, snaps are shit. Mm, well, we'll see about that in future videos, shall we? Um, and, <clears throat> of course, this is a matter of personal preference. Although I think it's absolutely stunning, you might think it's an absolute pair of crapped up pants. And that's fine. Please also keep posting your comments under the, all the videos that I produce. There is another comment video inbound on its way. Um, so as I say, do please participate and be part and put your 10 pennies in. Now, I've also bought a selection of games down from native games such as Zero AD and Free Orion and Free Civ to Lutris games such as the original Guild Wars 
to native Steam games like Crusader Kings and Valheim, and also Wine, uh, Proton driven games such as Star Trek Farming Sim uh, and Star Wars Kota. And so far, I have been absolutely delighted. The software comes down really quick. The system itself updates so fast. Doesn't give me any issues. I don't get any of the standard Ubuntu, you know, this thing has crashed and do you want to send a report? Blah, blah, blah. Nothing like that. It's absolutely stunning. I can only hope and pray that Ubuntu Cinnamon 24.02 is this good. Now, this is running on my MX Linux PC. <clears throat> which has, so far, produced all my YouTube content flawlessly. Day in, day out. Now, I can hear you all a gasp, shock horror. Don't tell me you've uninstalled MX Linux and installed Ubuntu Cinnamon. Absolutely not. I had a spare SSD. I've taken the MX Linux SSD out and put the Ubuntu um, cinnamon SSD in, configured it, set it up, bang, and this is what you're looking at. It's absolutely stunning, people. Um, could it replace my MX Linux as my daily driver? Uh, well, no, absolutely not, because I don't care how amazing, gorgeous, or stunning a distribution is, that in and of itself isn't enough. MX Linux built and based off of Debian Bookworm, plus it comes with all the goodness that the MX slash Antics slash Mepis team put into it. And for me, that still adds up to the most awesome desktop experience ever. So my MX Linux is safe. In fact, the next piece of bits of content you'll see on YouTube from me will be back on the MX Linux. But nevertheless, I had to have a go at this because I was so impressed with how freaking gorgeous this operating system is. I, I couldn't not have a go at it. I couldn't not do it. I really couldn't. So this is on the old quad-core i5-2400. Um, I still can't get a definitive answer if my main gaming P, which is PC, which is a Ryzen 5 1600 AF with 16 gigs of RAM and an AMD RX 588 gigabyte graphics card, is going to be compatible with the new Windows uh, 24H2. If not, I will probably reach for this distro to put on it. But I'll wait until 24.04 drops. Simple as that. Because I think 24.04, as it's a long-term support, will be stunning. Now, I get it that it's a Ubuntu base, and a lot of you will be, well, why don't you just install Cinnamon on an Arch base and you've got yourself a nice rolling distro and you can do all this sort of shit with it. Uh, yeah, you can, but Arch breaks. And I know there's people out there saying, oh, I've been running Arch Linux for 10 years. I've never, never had an issue. Bollocks. We could use Manjaro and put Cinnamon on it. We could use, of course, Argo Linux and put Cinnamon on that and have an Arch backend. Hell, we could run Gen 2 or Linux from scratch and stick Cinnamon on it. But when you think that Ubuntu is arguably the biggest free community support distro on the planet, for me, it makes such a sense. It also gives Ubuntu a bit of love back. And let's all be honest and frank here, were it not for Ubuntu and Canonical, whether you love or hate Canonical, Linux would not be in the wonderful desktop state it's in today. So we've all, whether you love or loathe Ubuntu, we've all got, a, got an awful lot to be grateful for to both Canonical and Ubuntu and the teams that work for them. Just my 10 cents. And I think the Linux community would be very wise to remember that. 
And I know I'm never going to change the opinions of your arch fanboys or your slack fanboys or your Gen 2 fanboys. I get that. I get it. Get it totally. Nevertheless, there is no advantage. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're running Arch or Gen 2 or Fedora or OpenSUSE or whatever, to being disrespectful to a distribution like Ubuntu, especially when it's this stunning. Please post your thoughts underneath the video. Am I getting super excited over nothing? Am I creating a storm in a teacup? Or have I stumbled upon the most gorgeous, stunning, functional distribution of 2024? Purely by accident. Be interesting to see what your comments are. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, thumb the videos up or down. I will see you for another wicked broken Ebs video.